And the next conversation that we're going to have is around die level API, um, where I'm not quite sure who's going to come up on stage first. Could that person please raise their hand who's going to come up first? Aha, OK. So then let me introduce you um, Shukru from Iopsis. He's the R&D manager, and he's going to talk to us about the high level API. This is the right moment to applause. Thank you. Actually, maybe you can, you can even be on the stage. Okay? You can do, you can fit together. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm here on this stage, uh, I'm a very shy person. I don't speak very well in front of people, or I try to. Um, so I was invited to speak a little bit about the high-level API and the perspective from the, um, the perspe from the perspective of um, ISPs. Uh, I'll be glad to share with you a few moments, and then I'll hand the microphone to uh, Shukru to share the presentation. Um, let, me, let me quickly jump on the that specific page. That's okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to say a few words first uh, as a history. <coughs> I attended last year OpenWRT Summit in Lisbon, and a lot of people approached me and were wondering, what the heck is Verizon doing here? And um, I started talking to them that uh, we would like to change pace. We would like to change our business model. So uh, it corresponds to something that is flexible and uh, very quick to adapt to different solutions and faster path to market. And a lot of people looked at me, and then we started talking, and people opened up. And at this point, I was sure that everybody w uh, had our attention as Verizon, as somebody that wants to change the game. Um, and um, with that said, I'm so glad that I have Randy and Mike joining us uh, today with, with us. Um, after so many months of uh, uh, design and deliberation and getting to a solution that we want to get, we finally are on the right track. We decided that purple is the way to go. That's why we're here. And I thank you guys very much because joining Purple Foundation um, was one of the key points that a lot of company actually did after Verizon joined. And I'm glad that we're such a good influence on the industry and on everybody else. Now, with that said, uh, we're talking about high-level API. And uh, a lot of people take that um, and don't know what exactly that is. Um, I would say that from um, our perspective, high-level API is an abstraction layer which allow us to be independent of any vendor that can serve us any kind of solution that we can plug on top as applications, and that application can actually reach all the way down to the kernel if necessary. Uh, and if I'm going too down into the weeds, please let me know. Uh, I'm kind of engineer going too much technical. Sometimes my mic is kicking my butt because of that. <laughs> uh, so uh, our whole idea behind Purple was, hey, uh, how do we get to separate hardware from software? But furthermore, how do we get all the software houses to work for us? Because we know, at least from our perspective, we already shared that Verizon doesn't have software development house and doesn't look forward to have one. And this is one of the answers that um, I want to expand on when Mike was talking about, um, and, and Wojtek actually asked, how do we get the money that is paid for all this work? Well, here is how we get the money. Software houses can build services for us that we can plug on top the high-level API and make sure that it complies with the same um, API and the same standards that we're trying to establish. This way, we can inter interchange different solutions. 
At the same time, as a service provider, we're going to go to a software house and say, please develop this stack for us. It could be the operating system stack. It could be higher up in the applications. It could be anything from top to bottom. For example, a security solution may include a kernel driver, may include a service, and may include a containerized solution on application level to, um, let's say, uh, uh, implement uh, parental controls, more sophisticated filtering of uh, um, high-level content, etc. So from that perspective, I see it that ISPs in this contest, context will benefit from every one of the software houses. It's not going to be we're going to point to one and say, you are ours forever. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to be changing software houses independently of, um, you know, of the solutions that we want to get, independently of the um, environment that we want to have, simply because some solutions are more competitive than others, or some solutions have features that we want, the other solutions may not. So from that perspective, I think everybody, everybody in this room as a software vendor can benefit from all that. Once you comply to that high-level API, and your application, of course, with the low-level API as well, your application actually is part, could be part of our ecosystem. And I am sure that I speak for the other ISPs, um, and I would like to ask them to confirm or, or you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but everybody wants to have a very flexible and um, some uh, a system that actually satisfies the customer. The other perspective when I say customer is also that we want our customers to have better experience. So far, you already know how many hours people spend on the phone waiting for service to be corrected or to be upgraded or uh, something's going wrong, need to be fixed. We want also our systems with the help of the low level and high level API in purple to be more proactive. Once we detect a problem, we want our applications to be able, through the standard channels, to send us a message and to say, okay, I can try to fix this problem in a very standard and, and you know, way that, that will not uh, di diminish the performance of the router and will not cause the, the customer to panic. Um, also, if there is a need, yeah, the customer can try to call on the phone, but we want our systems to be proactive and to make sure that we improve tenfold, if you want, our customer experience. And the high-level API that we're looking for is something that will be very light and does not burden the system with too much resources, too much memory. At the same time, we want this solution to be so easily pluggable from all kinds of applications, from the point of all kinds of um, uh, containerized solutions. And when I say containerized solutions, that's actually the trend going forward to be able to take any container from any of the software vendors. Of course, when it's signed properly and secured, and it's proven that it's something that we can plug into our customers' boxes. Let's go and use it. So I'll hand the microphone to Sukru to get down deeper into the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenie. Hi, everyone. So for some of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Sukru, but it's spelled as Sukru, since there is no English letters to spell it correctly. So what I will try to do is I will try to give examples on how we do we build apps and services on OpenWRT-based devices today without high-level API, and how would that change when the high-level API is ready. But I would like to start with, uh, as now that we have actually listened to, listened to the view of the operators, a small view from a software vendor, why purple is important to us as well. So in, uh, what, 
just to summarize what we do in IOPC is, is that we try to make an open WRT based enterprise uh, solution for CP products. And for that, over this, we have been extensively working on creating a framework which both facilitates integration of new SOCs, but also provides a serious uh, development environment for higher level development. And you will notice that if you look at Purple WRT and play around, that lots of our contributions mainly focus on that area, is actually providing, contributing on this framework pieces. So why are we doing that is also mainly so that we can also focus our efforts to follow the standards, uh, comply with the framework, but all, and shift our focus on developing more innovative applications so which will, we will help our customers, operators, or uh, hardware vendors, and et cetera, which will uh, also through them to the end users uh, offer better services. I think both uh, initially Mike and then Eugenie already touched very good uh, on the operator's view on that level. So, and how I will try to demonstrate that today now is actually giving with a couple examples uh, of today and tomorrow. Let me quickly go to the slide. But first, let's start with a checklist of a requirements of an up and service development environment. So when I look at this list, first thing I see is the APIs. As Eugene also said, these APIs are very important, which will abstract the gateway functionality and which covering it end to end and allows you easy way to interact with it. So that actually the consumers of this product can build services independent of both SOC, but also the specific software platform so that it can be seamlessly moved. And then you need a security layer, which is one other very important topic for the operators. On that, what we mean with security is first is the access control. I think role-based access control is very important. The session handling is very important, but also API security involve, might involve things like boot force attack protection, denial, denial of service, and et cetera, code injection and such. And then you need to expose these APIs over different protocols so that you give the developers flexibility to choose their tools for building their services let it be WebSockets, MQTT, XMPP, and et cetera. And then the other important uh, part, which we see all requirements from operators over the recent years, is the containerization to improve portability and also the security. Now, if feel free to correct me if there is anything missing in this list or if you think that's not necessary. Otherwise, I'm moving on to how now one can check off, tick off this list in an open WRT based platform. So what you see now mainly open WRT, you will see that, of course, a gateway is consists of a configuration functions and events. Now on open WRT platform, you can wrap, things, wrap this level with UBUS by exposing all these gateway functions over the system IPC, which is UBUS in this case. And then you do at the security layer using an important component of OpenWRT again with RPCD, which the purple version includes some uh, security enhancements. And then you have different uh, OpenWRT support packages for WebSockets, UHTTP, XMPP, and uh, MQTT and et cetera, that you can find all those pieces. And then the containerization that can be achieved through LXCs. So when you look, you have pretty much all the pieces you need to build the uh, service development environment. This is just a, a more traditional way of displaying the previous picture, but I will directly go on to the next slide, now actually giving an actual example how this is done today on OpenWRT-based platforms. So when we look at this screen that you will see some bunch of boxes, but the first we can start with this main two uh, important boxes, which is one, the OpenWRT UCI, which is UCI is OpenWRT's uh, configuration interface, and then OpenWRT 
default with render extensions has, uh, can have lots of manager applications to control the gateway functionalities, which I have listed there as user space application uh, control, uh, applications controlling gateway functions. So both of those components provides objects on UBUS, which then allows you to now, through UBUS, you can control the whole get functionality of gateway, configure everything, get all the events, register for the events, but also pretty much do all kind of operations to control the gateway. Now, with these pieces in mind, exposed to UBUS, now you see these other components on top, such as WebSockets, XMP, PNMQTT. Today, if you take a purple WRT build, which is based on OpenWRT, you will see that you can enable these UBUS APIs over JSON RPC through WebSockets. Now that's, you got your, and then you can simply bring in Mosquito for enable it over MQTT as well, et cetera. Now, with this now you see that you have the, all the building blocks for actually building these applications on top. So how us and our customers today build servers on top is that we provide simply, uh, besides these APIs, we also provide a web UI framework, which is based on JavaScript, also available on uh, Purple WRT, which allows you to build JavaScript-based widgets, which you can run these things on your gateway, remotely somewhere else, but also you can simply convert this to an application. But more importantly, you can also bring in uh, containers, containerized apps and services, which by default in OpenWRT, you could limit access to the WebSocket RPC and pre pretty much uh, replace access control based on the uh, role of the user or origin of the user and et cetera, and treat these uh, containers like an external device. And then start with a uh, very secure, very limited access and then increase the access control with whitelisting. So again, we, we have those pieces. And then of course, you have the cloud connection and then you can build apps and services directly on the host or remote. So, but I will not stay so much on these details. I will specifically give an example on how today, for example, USP is built, USP support is built on top of a purple WRT based platform without having high level API and then we will switch how it would work actually when we have a high level API. So I'm assuming most of you here already know what USP is and I think the talk after me might also from uh, BBF might touch that on a little bit as well. But USP is simply the new uh, stand, the, we can call it the new protocol from the Broadband World Forum which is uh, enhances the, the capabilities of CWMP. And then it is uh, expected to be the next gateway management for this industry, but also uh, it seems due to its support of multiple controllers and better uh, API specifications that it aims some building uh, service on top as well. But now I will just specifically talk how actually it's built on OpenWRT-based systems today. So as I had uh, mentioned, all the gateway functions and configuration now exposed to UBUS on OpenWRT-based system. So today when we take the purple WRT, which we have uh, contributed this BBF data models library, it sits on top of those objects. So it simply takes the TR181 data model, USB data model parameters, and then maps them to UBUS and UCI, which allows you to now provide you with a C library exposing all these USB functions. And on top, there's a USB component which takes this C API and exposes to UBUS so that you have a USB object on UBUS uh, which you can access through the system IPC but also over the web sockets, RPC, and et cetera. And then you can simply limit access, make implement access control on that object. And then we have taken uh, this OBUSP agent which is shared by BBF and Comspop and thank you for that. Uh, contribution, and we have integrated it on top of this USP object. So the only thing now today you need to do on OBUSP is just register your data model nodes and then 
uh, just do the necessary call to the US, US USB object, which is actually done very short code development. But the actual development happens on this BBF data model library part, which you actually, most of, the, most of it can be achieved by simply adding some kind of mapping. And here I will just, that's a very bad text over there, but what we showed that is that how easy it is actually when you have this clear UBUS UC APIs is to support BBF data models, which simply you will see some mapping entries there showing if you want to have channel property, you map it to use this UCI. If you parameter, if you want to do channel in use, you, are, you map it to this UBUS object. And the code is automatically generated, but you can also, in of code generation, you can put the JSON file on the box and it will dynamically support this. So it reduces the code development uh, quite a bit and you need to do actually manual development only the parts where you the direct mapping is not possible. And I will quickly, this is just some examples of uh, the UB USB API on UBUS and then some example UBUS objects and UCI objects. That's all these pieces now uh, in place. Then, of course, we talk, about, we talk about this in many platforms and then we also talk about purple framework and high level API. Then we get this question quite a bit saying that if we already have this framework allowing consumers to build SOC agnostic services, why do we need still a high level API? Why do you bother? That's actually, the Eugene already very well explained that's why do we need that is that, okay, with this kind of approach where you actually extend OpenWRT has lots of the capabilities which then you can, you can extend with vendor specification, but there are two things. You can still run it across different SOCs, but you still rely on this software vendor first to cover end-to-end -end coverage of all the gateway functionality, and also you rely on their API extensions. There is OpenWRT APIs, but you also rely on the vendor extension APIs. And that's first thing. Then you still somehow depend on vendor uh, extensions when you build your services on top. And the other is that if you want to move the services to another OpenWRT, uh, sorry, if you want to move the services on a non-OpenWRT-based platform, let's take, for example, RDKB, then it's not possible. So OpenWRT has all the coverage, very well coverage with the vendor extensions, but still some operators here might want to use a different platform than OpenWRT, but still build services that can work on these uh, various platforms. And this still requires, ah, uh, please go ahead. Uh, no, I, I just showed USP as an example. Stop, stop, yeah. sorry. Could you just, um, for the audience at home in front of the TVs, just repeat your question? I was just trying to understand what you explained. So, um, are you proposing to use USB as an API between the, sorry, I have an echo here, between the um, application and the underlying platform? No, the USB here is to, was to demonstrate uh, how actually you can build a management component on top of OpenWRT-based platform today, rather than uh, suggesting usage of USB. Because USB, they, there are two hot topics. It's mostly that vendors or operators look at when actually be moving their services between different platforms. The most obvious ones is Web UI and also their management components, like TR16 and USB. And for that, we have taken USB as an example, how it is integrated today on top of vendor-specific APIs. And later now we will switch to show how it will be built on top of high-level API and uh, the benefit of it. Now today, actually you made, you made a good point. Now today we have contributed this uh, USB integration and we have contributed this web GUI framework in purple WRT. But are, can you take it and use it right away? If you take it right away, you will be able to get 50, 60% of functionality 
if you use OpenWRT. Yes. If you don't use OpenWRT, you will not be able to benefit from it at all. But if it was built on the standardized APIs, then our contributions, for example, could be fetched and used right away. Then you could, uh, by default, without almost doing any effort, have a lot of coverage with Web UI, and you would already have the USP support on your system. So that's also one point I will try to bring, is that why building these services, these kind of pieces on high-level API, also will help us benefit from these contributions that we do uh, on purple, under purple umbrella, so that we could benefit from each other development as well. So if I was not clear on with the USP part, sorry, but my main intention with showing USP was how you actually build today. USP and, for example, Web GUI on APIs, OpenWRT-based APIs, without, which doesn't have high-level API, which doesn't follow high-level API standard at the moment. Is that clear? Yeah, please continue. Maybe I have some extra questions at the end. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for any questions, more detail, we can go later. So this is the main reason, main answer we give, but. Anyone that who also has more answers why high-level API is needed even when we have in this kind of coverage with vendor extensions, uh, of course, welcome after this. Period. But now, this is simply I try to show the, how it would work on OpenWRT with high-level API in place. Now, on high-level API working group, uh, there is already this API definitions and there is some now discussions for further enhancements for in terms of coverage and also interaction with APIs. Once that piece is implemented, it's pretty much the main point is that, okay, for vendor like us can still have all these UBAS, UCI objects and their own extensions, but the, uh, it's up to the vendor that eventually the main point will be that we and other vendors will support high level API which can be uh, accessible through system IPC or and also JSON RPC and et cetera with different uh, various protocols. And then building services, we start moving this already built services and build new services on top of that high level API. And here I try to show how USP would work uh, versus today when we have high level API. So simply you could see that now, in this approach, BBR data model library directly is communicated with high-level API, meaning that once we have high the high-level API definitions, uh, final version, and once we're in place, the simply the JSON files that I had showed earlier will be changed to map to this high-level API. And then uh, it means that any vendor who actually can uh, is going to support high-level API on their platform can simply take this old USP effort that's in purple and make use of it. Can take this web GUI framework and make use of it. And anyone else who builds that be cloud uh, based plat playground or platform or uh, whatever application service on that, those things can be shared among us. Of course, some of those things is going to be priority, but some of things will be also openly shared uh, between the community. So. This is mainly to, it's, of course, now that we don't have the final version of high-level API, it's difficult to demonstrate how it would really look in detail, but at least here I try to visualize how it will be built. And you can see the containerized application services also would now start talking to high-level API instead of talking to OpenWRT and vendor-specific APIs, which can still live under the high-level API. So uh, when I put these boxes, of course, I could talk a bit more in detail how you actually, how the security works on OpenWRT, API security, how you really interact with the APIs, but I will uh, not touch those parts. If anyone has any questions on that level, I am willing to answer, and there is already more OpenWRT developers here who are better at answering those questions than me. So those technical things we can discuss and take later. But here I mainly wanted to show uh, how actually a software vendor build applications, the services, and try to tackle the problems of operators today, but and how it would work actually tomorrow. 
and once we actually follow this common high-level API, how we would benefit from the industry contribution better. And for the ones who wants to play with this framework components uh, themselves, play around and make a feel of it, in open the, in the purple feeds, you will be able to get access to all these components, uh, which is git purple there. And then if you wanted to get access to source code, uh, these slides I think will be shared, you can get access to the codes and simply get a feel of it. Okay, thank you. And the questions? Thank, thank you very much, Shukru. Um, that, was, that was definitely very interesting. Um, I would add, uh, just for all of you that um, had the same problem that I did with uh, reading, we will distribute the slides after all of the slides will be distributed in one, in one pack uh, so that you have them for later consumption. And then you'll also have the email address of the speaker to ask questions around that. Um, does anyone have a question on, uh, for Shukru at this moment right now? Hi, uh, I'd like to know what is the status of the high-level APIs? Is it already uh, the standard is out, or the APIs are out, or is there a certain uh, you know timeline that you're working with? Okay, on that, actually, I could give the mic to Joao, who has. Hi, can you hear me? So um, right now, there there's a, a already one specification. Uh, on the high-level API, but I think the most important thing to, to clarify is that uh, the high-level API is not one single block. It's not, for example, a remote management protocol. Uh, it's intended to be a collection of services which have independent life cycle. So it will always be uh, an evolving uh, effort. So it could be that today we have one specific service on a specific version, and later on, we find a need to extend that specification, that, that, sorry, that specific service, then we can do that. And we can do that without creating higher level API version two. Naturally, uh, there are new things uh, coming in, new things, new functionality that uh, we think uh, needs, needs to be added. But that's always an ongoing. So I hope that answers your question. I didn't do it. <laughs> Control of sound is at the back of the room. I saw everyone look at me. I, I cannot. Usually in the, in the working group calls, I can do that. I can actually mute people. I have only done that once so far in the last 16 months. So let's hope we keep it that way. Um, was that me causing the, oh. <laughs> Maybe it was intentional. No, it was not. Um, did that answer the question? Okay, awesome. Do we have any other questions in the in the room? Aha, just to the side over there. Uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, can you please uh, switch back to the previous slide uh, again? Yeah. And the question is, um, if I understand it correctly, you are mapping the high-level API to the UCI. So you will have some kind of adapter from the high-level API to the UCI. And uh, if we are going through the data model which is presented by Broadband Forum, you are mapping like data model to the high level API, which will be mapped then to the UCI. And uh, why uh, is this process chosen? Because it looks like uh, mapping the broadband data model, the TR181, uh, 181, it's more fitable to the uh, presentation of the router's parameters. Because high level API is more like objects for the external. So uh, isn't it more reasonable to map the high level API to data model? Maybe in this way, why this direction was chosen? Uh, th thanks, thanks for the, the question. I think that's a, a, a very, very uh, valuable question. And um, basically, um, the, the intention, I, th I think there is a, a big uh, misconception here. That's why I think these kind of questions are always very uh, productive. So right now, if you look at USB TR69, um, they are remote management protocols, right? Uh, if you want to develop, for example, a mobile application, 
With TR69, you had to go for do, through ACS, but USB, now you can do that directly, and that's, that's actually a, a service. Uh, but if you start, but there is a second kind of service, which is uh, services that reside within the, the gateway, right? So for example, the web GUI is a very, very ba basic example. So you can look at the functionality uh, that um, the data models that BBF has, all that functionality there, you can pretty much um, do that with, uh, with USB and so over, uh, but it's an overhead to, to do that. You would have to do an internal HTTP or MQTT request in order to do that. But that's only from, you usually do that through access to the, to the, to the internal bus, right? On OpenWT you have UBus, on RDK you have uh, CCSP, and now you're, there's a shift for RBus. Uh, and if you start thinking about other features like uh, you have um, a mesh controller, right? You really want to optimize for efficiency. So it's a lot of overhead using a remote management protocol for doing that, although it can be. Now, naturally, uh, we can also discuss about the data model, right? Because many times we talk about USB, but some people talk it from the standard point of view, the protocol, other people talk it from the data model as of TR 181 uh, uh, perspective. And um, the truth is there is a lot of functionality there, but there are other things that are still missing. So a clear example, and, and we are having discussions with uh, uh, BBF, by the way, in this regard, to see if we can help those two initiatives to, to, to come uh, together is um, logging, for example, or persistent storage, right? If you look at TR181 today, you can upload log files, right? But if you are developing a web GUI, for example, and you want to register one event like the user admin has failed to authenticate, you are not going to upload a file, right? You want an API, you say, I want to register this event, and I want to do that away. Uh, another thing is, for example, persistent storage, right? You might have a service that you want to persist configuration, if you look at TR181 today, uh, you, you, have to, you have a complete log file. So there are some things which are missing right now in TR181, which is perfectly normal because it's a remote management protocol, uh, but we can, we can always work to try to get those two coming together. But the big message right here is USV uh, it tries to, to be as uh, services residing outside the device, but there's also a need to develop things which happen inside the device, and that's the short message to your answer. So I'm uh, Indika Miragaya working on Vodafone. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the message is clear. Sometimes we mix up a bit messages, right? Uh, we talk about high level API, and we start talking about UCI, we start talking about uh, UBAS. For me, it's much simpler. Problem statement is, from the ISP perspective, there is no single state, no open WRT there. There is many implementations from many vendors, which means everybody does their own API, right? You want to integrate anything there, you need to go to every specific model and integrate one by one. That's the problem statement. So how do we solve that? So we don't go, I mean, the, the, a good starting point is to have, you know, harmonization on the upper level. That's what a high level API is about. It's not about, UBAS is not about anything, you know, beyond that. Very simple, yeah? And you know, there is a common language. Every application, you know, can integrate with all the gateways, yeah? It's as simple as that. And actually, we are trying to even abstract the bus, right? This exposed in the APC, uh, and what we want to be is even, you know, abstracting that. So, you know, other platforms like at VKB can also offer a, a high level API. That's Vodafone's vision that we try to share with the community. Yeah, so very simple. So no UCI, nothing like that. I will keep the picture much simpler. And it's not dependent on anything like OpenWRT. This will be a stack independent initiative. That's how we see it, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that that message is clear. And there is the debate also in using TR181, being as been one of we have uh, some debates on that, and Joe made the point, right? From, from historically, this is the purpose of the whole TR69 initially and all the data models, it was meant for something else, so we thought there is a need for an API on the CPE that is meant for integrating services, and that's where the purpose of high-level API. Now, USP is starting to get in that space, yeah? 
And just wanted to share with the community here, you know, we have the board discussion uh, uh, last week, and um, basically we want to get closer to the uh, broadband forum community, right? To make sure that, you know, the purple initiatives fit well on the USB picture and so on. So we're working us on that direction. Yeah, we need to see and make sure that we are not creating competing propositions there, you know, USB versus purple high level API, that should not be how we should frame it, yeah? So that's, yeah, I just wanted to share, yeah. Go take, you take the. I would like to add something because this kind of questions are coming back again and again. Uh, I think that the misunderstanding comes from the, because of, of the beginning of what we call today high level APIs. And that's true, it's basically about exposing features that are already expressed in data models. But this is just a beginning. So this is why it makes this confusion. But in the future, we will have to add new APIs that will probably have nothing in common with any data models. Let me give you an example. If you want to develop applications that need to have a look on, let's say, 200 first packets coming from a given device. This is not something that you will e express in a data model. This is just a functional API. And this is what is necessary to develop new services, etc., and to leverage, you know, the external uh, innovation. So when you start talking about this kind of APIs, we are not talking anymore about any data model. So it's just a beginning. This is not the objective. And the, the, the reasons they explain it are perfectly valid, but this is just the beginning. Sorry, I just want to check with the room. I, I do think that this is a very valuable discussion. I just want to make sure that everyone knows we're going into the break time now. So if you need a coffee kick before the next session, um, Maybe take two minutes very quietly and get the coffee because I do not want to interrupt this, uh, this discussion too much, if that's okay with everyone. Just, just a small hint because the question raises up uh, again and again. I think there are um, errors missing between the high-level API and the UBUS object. Then it makes more clear that there's, there's something going on. This looks at the moment that this is going, the high level API is going only to the data model. So that's my impression. Yeah. The a high level API could actually end up being just a UBUS object itself. Uh, my question is a bit technical. So have you guys um, looked at how this approach may or may not work with any real-time applications or real-time services? Because you keep making reference to UBUS, right? And then um, I, I just want to see what, what you guys looked at, how it, how it may or may not perform. Are you specifically referring if it works on top of UBUS or on yeah, top of high-level okay. API? Then let me be more specific. So. You know, they're Wi-Fi drivers, right? They're chipset companies, provide Wi-Fi drivers, great. And then there's some functions in there that typically CP vendors don't want to expose, whether they have a middleware level or they, you know, there's some code that's not clean, etc. So then people who may want to access that, they have to write their code, whole bunch of mess, right? And that, that contributes this 18 month development cycle that uh, the carriers uh, talk about, if you want. So, but to do anything with that, you have to access the Wi-Fi driver, especially if you're doing anything real-time or something critical, like channel scans, this kind of things. So I, I, mean, I think I'm giving enough flavor. I don't want to take everybody's time here. So to, uh, instead of accessing the Wi-Fi driver directly, right, how, how would this architecture ensure that those services are accessible, right? Uh, okay. Now, I just want to solve this. I want to understand. I'm sure you guys looked into okay. this because this is a very messy area, right? I think it I would understand. be wonderful if we could fix this problem so we don't have to do a million different versions okay. of the world. 
So I'll just try to answer, but I, for example, that goes a bit in some, on some of the purple WRT topics that we try to handle as well. So how we try to uh, build this thing is, or the main point is that uh, the application services will never access the Wi-Fi drivers directly. That's already one of the points, that they always start with the restricted access list and then they get access. So the responsibility here on this, the things that we see, user space applications, control gateway functions, all the applications that are responsible with accessing the drivers and controlling the subsystem is supposed to be built on that layer. And then they become, provide, they become providers to higher layers, which means, for example, my wi I have a Wi-Fi manager that I need to do scanning. So I call, I make my U-Bus call or our bus call on RDKB or whatever, which then Wi-Fi manager takes that one and then goes to driver, scans it, and then re return the results uh, on U-Bus. And then on that, on that wi let's say, Wi-Fi, that radio scan uh, function on U-Bus, then you give, then you choose on the high level API, okay, I have a smart Wi-Fi solution. I will give access to that specific U-Bus object on through the high level API uh, access control. But I have also a DSL object which comes from DSL manager and that smart Wi-Fi solution has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the DSL drivers or et cetera. So I will not give access to that. So the high level API uh, services built on top is supposed to be high level and not interact but the specific subsystem manager are responsible with handling the communication with driver and exposing that uh, necessary APIs to higher layers. One second, can you please, sorry, for the kids at home. This is fantastic, right? That's, the, that's exactly what we want to do. I guess um, the question is how do we ensure that what you say, these services or these uh, functions are accessible through UBAS, et cetera, in a way that doesn't limit the Wi-Fi driver functions, right? Because if it limits, it becomes a subset of what's available. I'm just giving one example. There are other things, right? Um, uh, then what we're doing is we're actually instead of standardizing, we're again like kind of carving out portions of functions that are not going to be available through UBUS. So we have to make sure that the U, whether it's through UBUS or some other means, whatever we're exposing, right, doesn't limit the functions available on the resources. But I think the real, I mean, we see this on the, you know, real world, right? We, we hate accessing Wi-Fi drivers. It's horrible. We do Wi-Fi management, a lot of work. But without that, how is this available, right, uh, on this kind of framework? I think we need a bit more thought because the real world data that is not in line with uh, what we're saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we're gonna, we're definitely gonna yeah, come exactly. back. I was gonna point to the, our efforts on the low level API more general, but I think that Voter is gonna cover some of those parts, then we can, once those all two discussions combine, we can have maybe more specific discussions on that. But yeah. I, I will, otherwise I will dive into the low level API and probably WRT topics. 